this next video will make you question everything. So remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's check it out. Whether it's a humble grave or an attention-seeking crypt, there's a general vibe of what an eternal resting place is supposed to look like. But some people want to be remembered forever, and they do so by designing rather unique, final resting places that simply can't be ignored. These are the 20 strangest tombs in the world. Strangest tombs in the world. Number 20. Alien Tomb, Russia. In Molebka, at the edge of Permsky Krai in Russia, is a place known as the Alien Cosmodrome. It's intriguing stuff, I know. And oddly enough, for this first point, not quite what we may have traditionally regarded as a tomb. Sorry about that. It's basically a bit like a Russian Area 51. In the 1980s, the place became famous for anomalous phenomenon. It also goes by the names of Perm Triangle, Molebsky Triangle, M Triangle, and Zone M. Since a geologist named Emil Bakarin saw a bright glowing sphere above in the forest in 1983, the place has become synonymous with alien activity. People alleged to have witnessed UFOs, flashes in the sky, and other phenomena all across Zone M. So this monument is not exactly a tomb. I mean, it contains no body. No aliens are actually known to have been there. But it is a place which holds the notion of the extraterrestrial close to its heart. Known locally as Alan Shinka, this is a monument that was erected in honor of the alien, the only one in all of Russia, apparently, and they plan to also open a museum of UFOs along with an observatory shaped like a flying saucer to encourage even more tourism in the area. Before we go, on. like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will... Now it's time for the sweet topic. This tombstone is unlike any other we've ever seen, because very few tombstones look like the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise of movies. Even fewer that have been made out of recycled bike parts. But this grave is the final resting place of Marc de Courcy, whose life had been defined by his love and adoration of motorcycles and the aforementioned films. So... Why, why do I want to go see this in real... Anybody else just sitting here like, I would definitely go check that out. You know what I mean? But we have to sit here and remind ourselves, this is someone's grave. You know what I mean? But I, I can't help but fight the urge of wanting to go see this thing up close and personal. But while those not in the know may see it as a thing that would shock or confuse or even offend, I think it's a beautiful and playful way to celebrate his uniqueness and individuality. If two things in life that he loved, the most are motorbikes and the alien movies. Why not have a tombstone that celebrates both of those things? I mean, Utterly beautiful and life-affirming. If you were to design your own tombstone, what would it look like? Based on the things that you love. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Why would that be disrespectful, though? If that's what the person liked, then... We gotta get out of the habit of thinking it's supposed to be just the old traditional headstone. Man, people can put what they want section down below using the hashtag sweet topic number 19 Inez Clark monument now for an actual tomb this is a sad and spooky story from the 19th century when little Inez Clark in 1880 aged just six years old her grieving parents commissioned a life-size statue of the child to serve mm. as a grave marker instead of your standard headstone. Located in the historic Graceland Cemetery in Chicago, Inez Clark's tomb is one of the most well-known and easiest to recognize. The sculpture itself took a year to be completed by a Sicilian sculptor, and then it was placed on the tomb. As time went on, a transparent box was positioned over the sculpture in order to protect it from the more harsh effects of the weather, but that is just the basics. A local legend goes that a night watchman was doing his rounds in the cemetery, and as he passed by the grave of Inez Clark, he saw, to his horror and dismay, that the statue of the child was missing and that the box was empty. Apparently, he ran away and never came back. The next morning, the sculpture was in its place again, and there are so many stories of people witnessing a child in 19th century costume wandering the cemetery. It is very spooky indeed. Number 18. Buried in a Rock 
Now, this is a story with a rather macabre origin. I mean, it is about a tomb, so that kind of figures. North Carolina State Senator William Jeffries had such an intense fear of worms. To be specific, he had a fear of his body being consumed by worms. You know, as is the natural way of things. He had a wish to be buried inside of a big boulder instead of in the ground. This was way back in the 1800s. Jeffries was elected to office in 1844 and seemed to be young and healthy. He was just 28 years old at the time, and so his return from a trip with what appeared to be a mild illness was not seen as especially serious, except that he then began to hallucinate. Mm. During that time, he started to talk obsessively about his death and the terror at the idea of being buried in the ground, and anyone who came to visit him was told to bury me in a rock. He grew weaker and weaker, then he in October of 1845, his family enlisted the help of a stonemason to honor his last wish to be buried inside of a rock. It would take that mason an entire year to chisel out the rock, and he also carved a traditional headstone with an inscription. As well as the weird final resting place of the man, there are some extra rumors that surround his the weirdest and perhaps grossest is that while awaiting the rock chiseling efforts of the stonemason, his body was placed into a barrel full of brandy, and then that was lowered into the river to preserve him until his rock tomb was finished. The brandy? Barrel. Well, it was then drunk afterwards. Oh, Jeez. I was wondering that. I was wondering that. Y'all are some sick individuals, bro. I was sitting there wondering if somebody was going to drink that. And apparently... Lots of people did. Oh. Oh. Ish. Number 17. The Nubian Pyramids of Sudan. Ancient Sudan was a great civilization which thrived nearly 5,000 years ago. During that time, the Nubian kings of the Kingdom of Kush ruled over the region, and they, like the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, also enjoyed building themselves gigantic and elaborate tombs. These pyramids were built at a site in Nuri, near the then capital of Napata, and back in the 1800s, archaeologists became very interested in the pyramids of Nubia. They had, of course, been pretty thoroughly plundered by grave robbers, and they took basically everything that wasn't nailed down, from every treasure and every object placed in the tombs to the actual bodies of the kings themselves. Nice! Then in the 1830s, some lunatic explorer by the name of Giuseppe Ferlini thought that the best course of action in the excavation of these ancient and sacred sites was to smash the tops off of the pyramids. Yes, he actually did this to 40 of the Nubian pyramids, which accounts for why they're not in the same sort of condition as their Egyptian counterparts. Number 16. Paray Lachey Cemetery. The most famous of the many Parisian cemeteries, Paray Lachey, dates back to the Napoleonic era. It was established in 1804 by Napoleon I. These days, that cemetery is stuffed to the brim with bones of the departed Parisian people, which includes many famous former residents. The cemetery did take a while to become established as the place to be seen. How do y'all feel about crowded cemeteries? Because I kind of want to believe that maybe some people believe that if you bury everyone together, then they'll find each other in the afterlife easier, quicker maybe, or make it that much possible for them to find each other. You know what I'm saying? If some people believe that it's a possibility you may not see your family again. So maybe this... Even this increases the odds of that happening. Maybe. You know what I mean? I don't know. How do y'all feel about crowded or or cemeteries like this? You know what I mean? Jam-packed. It was believed by many to have been positioned too far from the city center, so they had a marketing campaign and had the mortal remains of the French philosopher Pierre Abelard move there in 1817. Slowly, the cemetery gained in popularity. How weird. Although the notion of a fashionable cemetery does seem weird, this one has definitely been attracting the deceased glitterati since the mid-19th century. In fact, there are hundreds of famous corpses in this place, and it's a regular place of pilgrimage for oddballs and the cemetery lurking weirdos who are looking to pay respects to the likes of Jim Morrison of The Doors, Oscar oh, Wilde, and many there. more. Number 15. The Okanoin Cemetery. 
In the mountains of the Wakayama Prefecture to the southeast of Osaka is the Okanoyan Cemetery, the final resting place of the mortal remains of more than 200,000 Buddhist monks who are lying in wait for the future Buddha's resurrection, apparently. This is actually the biggest cemetery in Japan, measuring 1.24 miles long and has existed there since 1816 AD. Now that is very big and very old, and it's also cons- Why did, see most cemeteries give me the creeps, but why does this one look like so peaceful and serene? Like I wouldn't be nervous or scared or weird out at all walking through here. In fact, I think I probably find some of the most peace I've had in a long time, just strolling through here. Why is that? 1816 AD. Now that is very big and very old, and it's also considered to be very sacred. It's believed to be a bit spooky at night. I mean, it is a graveyard after all. So that comes with the territory, surely. The thing that makes the place so very sacred is that it houses Kobu Dashi's mausoleum. This was the Buddhist master who had introduced Shinbon Buddhism to Japan all the way back in 805 AD. The monks believe that he is in eternal meditation in this place, and they offer him twice daily ritualistic meals. Wow. Number 14. The Tomb of Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great was the founder of the first Persian Empire all the way back in 559 BC. Some said that he had died in battle in 530 BC, but this was disputed by others. Anyways, we can be fairly certain that he did die sometime at some point and that this is his tomb. The tomb itself is a mausoleum built from stone in the far province of Iran, and it's a significant cultural heritage site preserved within an area of great archaeological importance. The structure is built out of two parts, a platform which has six stone steps, and a room with a roof that stands on top of this is part of the building. The tomb was renovated in 1972 and then again in 2002 and 2008, and every year it's the location for celebrations of the unofficial holiday known as Cyrus the Great Day. What a fun one. Number 13. The Tomb of Mary Ellis. When Mary Ellis passed away, her grave was carefully placed in a wooded area near the river in New Brunswick, New Jersey. But time marches on and things change. Her peaceful final resting place is now in the middle of a parking lot at a movie theater. She died in 1828 after a sad story of lost love and a lonely life and was buried in the woods and 140 years would pass by without any disruptions. Then the 1960s arrived and the fashion for digging up green spaces and covering them with asphalt really- Yo, I bet they probably elected to leave that there for t like tax purposes. Imagine what they doing to the- They, they think they smart, but we on to them, bro. Uh, see, Donald Trump put us on game with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He let us know about that with having that, getting those tax breaks because you have like a cemetery either at your, in your on the on your acreage at your home or maybe at your business or something like that. They're using that for tax breaks. Gotta be. We got underway. Yeah, they ain't slick. Poor old Mary Ellis was buried right in the middle of the proposed parking lot for a discount store. Oh, the indignity of it all. And weirdly enough, the planners figured that they would just leave her tomb right there in the middle of the lot. I As bet. the years passed and the space has since been repeatedly altered and renovated, the ground around the tomb has been dropped, and now the grave and marker are eight feet above the rest of the area. Mm -hmm. Number 12. I bet. The Tomb of Florence Irene Ford. This story is a sad one, and I can't even stand it. Florence Irene Ford was just 10 years old when she died, but during her tragically short life, she was completely terrified of storms. And so her mother had requested that her daughter's tomb was built in an unusual way. The coffin was to be fitted with a small window. It was a window so she could see in and there were steps leading down into the ground beside the casket. Her mother wanted to be able to continue to sit with her daughter when there was a storm, just as she had done during her life in order to comfort her. She would sit beside the coffin during storms and read or sing until the bad weather had passed on. The spaces remain unchanged from when it was built in 1871 all the way up until the 1950s when a concrete wall was added to prevent vandalism. Wow. Number 11. The Russian Countess. 
Now we're back in the Parisian necropolis of Pierre Lachaise Cemetery, where this time we're dropping in on a tomb with a crazy story. This is the tale of Elizabeth Demidoff, a Russian countess who had when she was 40 years old in 1818 in Paris. She had an unusual request when she died. Her will said that she would leave a huge fortune to any person who would spend a year and a day in her tomb with her body. It's creepy, but what made that request even more scary and dark was... I don't know, y'all. Let's think about this now. You know, everybody got a price. That's starting. Everybody has a price. So don't get all here all high and mighty like you wouldn't. Everybody got a number, bro. What's your number? What would it take for you? I don't, I'm going to have to think about that for a minute. You, you talk about a long time to sit with a body. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that one. Was the fact that the entire inside of the Whitestone Mausoleum would be covered with mirrors. This meant that anyone who took up the offer would have nowhere to turn where they would not see the body of the Countess inside of her crystal coffin. Any person who might be brave or even bonkers enough to attempt the task would have only the funeral light at the head of the coffin by which to read, and they would have no contact with any human living person for the entire year. They could walk around the cemetery after it had been closed to the public at the end of the day, though. Although many people had attempted the challenge, nobody managed to last the full year that was required to win the fortune. Some of them, so the legend goes, were even driven mad. I was about to say... <laughs> That ain't as easy as we would think, bro. You drive, you drive yourself crazy. No one to talk to, interact with, have a conversation with. It's just the darkness inside of there. Then when everybody leaves, you can walk around a bit, get some fresh air or something. Then it's back to the darkness. Yeah, I give you about a month, two months, three months, maybe. That's it. Number 10, <laughs> Russia's City of the... The City of the Dead is also known as the Village of Dargavs in North Ossetia in Russia. It's located in a valley which contains a truly ancient cemetery where the residents of the area would bury their loved ones along with their belongings and their clothing. The medieval necropolis contains the mortal remains of more than 10,000 people. There's a local legend that says that anyone who enters the Village of the Dead will never leave alive. But whether this is the case or not, it's actually unknown to me. I just work here. But you are welcome to go and test out the theory if you dare. The site today contains 99 extremely well-preserved medieval crypts, all of which have a single window so that it's possible to peep in and see how well the corpses have been weathered. If you happen to enjoy that sort of thing, which if you do, is rather creepy of you. Yeah. Number nine. So no. Capuchin Crypt in Rome. Located in central Rome in Italy, this is one of the weirder and distinctly spookier places to visit in this extraordinarily historic city. In 1631, the Capuchin Friars of Rome moved into the Santa Maria della Con something or other church and immediately set about adding a personal touch to the decor. Very personal as it goes. These monks decided that they were bored of all that old style of interior design and would use their creativity and their brethren to spruce up the place a bit. That's right, they took all of the bones of the old monks and turned them into decorations, creating a uniquely bony design in each of the crypts. The ossuary contains a whole bunch of different crypts, each one themed by bone. There's one for skulls, one for legs, one for pelvises, and they also hit a Halloween horror tone with the use of mummified monks dressed in robes and dangled from the walls and ceilings. As time went on and the crypt got electricity, they then continued on with their macabre creations, adding bits of the dead monks to fashion fancy light fittings. They've topped off the ambiance of the place with a jolly motto that reads, What you are now, we once were. What we are now, you shall be. Ooh. What a fun one. By the way, I've actually been there and I've never quite recovered. Number 8. Rootkund Skeletons Lake and now for something completely what? gruesome. 
All the way back in 1942, a British guard made a discovery in Rupkund, India that freaked everyone out. There was a frozen lake that appeared to be stuffed full of skeletons. The ice was melting due to the summer conditions, and it had begun to reveal more and more bony remains that were floating in the waters and heaped all around the edge of the lake. As it was wartime, it was immediately assumed that these must be the bodies of enemy soldiers who had tried to sneak into India, but on further investigation, they found that these bodies were not fresh enough to be that. It seemed as though the bones were probably rather old indeed, although they couldn't determine how old, or for that matter, what it was that might have actually killed over 200 people in this valley. Then, in 2004, an expedition to the site made a discovery. The bodies were dated to be from around 850 AD, and they all appeared to be from two distinct groups of people, a tribe or family, and a group of locals. The artifacts discovered alongside the skeletons revealed that they were a group that was being led through the valley by guides from the local area. They had all died in the same kind of way, by heavy blows to the head, by a rounded object from directly above. And that's when the plot thickened. Then they uncovered an ancient folk song from the region, which described a goddess that was made angry by outsiders damaging her mountains, and that she had flung enormous hailstones as hard as iron down upon them. It was concluded that these people had all been trapped in the valley when a terrible hailstorm came, and with hailstones as big as nine inches in circumference. They had nowhere to get shelter, and they simply how absolutely terrifying. I told people before, bro. You know, some people like to be daredevils when they see a hailstorm or something coming around. Want to run out in it. Okay, play around if you want to. Now I have proof to show somebody of what it can actually do to you or a group of people, man. <laughs> like, stop playing with Mother Nature. She is undefeated. Leave her alone. Just, <laughs> just let her do her thing and then leave. Respectfully. Number 7. The Tomb of Pakal The tomb of the ancient Mayan king Pakal was actually unearthed back in 1948, but nobody managed to decipher the hieroglyphic words on the tomb until some 60 years after it was discovered. It turned out that the tomb declared that it was the House of the Nine Sharpened Spears, which sounds lovely, don't you think? Anyway, it's basically all that they've discovered. It seems as if this indicated the era in which it was carved would have been between 700 and 800 BC in the last century of the Mayan civilization, and it indicates the war that was raging all throughout that period. The Maya actually developed hieroglyphic writing as well as an astronomical system and a calendar. Number 6. The Valley of the Kings The huge and massively obvious tombs of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs were not the only way that these long-ago people honored their kings. They also spent a lot of time and effort on building underground and secret mausoleums for their leaders. Mm -hmm. This is the Valley of the Kings in the area on the west bank of the Nile near Luxor in Egypt. It became the main burial ground for the pharaohs and other royals and significant officials during the New Kingdom period that was between 1539 and 1075 BC. It came to be the final resting place of kings like Tutankhamun, Seti I, Ramses II, and many queens, high priests, and other fancy people of the time. That was until they were all rather unceremoniously dug up again and dragged to spend eternity in museums and such like places within the modern world. These tombs were all completely hidden beneath the sand of the valley, and the general reasoning for this was that the big ostentious tombs of other pharaohs were almost immediately victim to grave robbers. And so, by hiding these tombs, they stood a better chance of remaking undisturbed travel to the afterlife with all of their meticulously prepared stuff intact. Until the archaeologists arrived, anyway. I mean, what's the difference between grave robbing and archaeology anyways. Go ahead and start up a row about the ethics of such things in the comments down below. I know you want to. Number 5. Newgrange the Monument of Newgrange is a Stone Age tomb that is located in Ireland's Boyne Valley in County Meath. Uh, it's older different. than the Great Pyramid of Giza, and even older than Stonehenge. This passage-type tomb has stood in this spot for over 5,200 years, and it's basically a mound with a series of underground passageways. That mound measures 279 feet in diameter, and it's 43 feet high, covering about an acre of land. Inside the mound, there's a passage which is 62 feet long and leads into a chamber 
which has three alcoves. The passage and the chamber align with the rising sun during the time around the winter solstice, which seems to have been very significant to the Neolithic people. The whole thing is surrounded by a bunch of massive stones, 97 of them in total, which are carved with art also from the period. I'm glad these, these tombs and stuff like this are identified now. I'm glad we know about them. Imagine stumbling upon some of these and not knowing what they were and getting inside and looking around and realizing that you're now inside of a tomb. Yeah. Number no four, no Catacombs thing. of Paris. In the middle of the 18th century, an awful lot of people had the audacity to keep on dying all over the show in Paris, and the cemeteries Ooh. soon became overflowed. And there's nothing especially enjoyable about a cemetery that just keeps on leaking out everywhere. So the people of Paris, who were still alive at that point of course, needed to find a solution for their corpse problem. Chucking them into the river soon became a little bit whiny, so they went back to the drawing board and came up with a catacomb idea. The catacombs are an ossuary, that's basically a bone store that's located in the endless tunnels that are beneath the city in the former mines. They took all the more bony bits and pieces out of the overflowing cemeteries and then bunged them all down under Paris in the tunnels. To begin what y'all think it smell like down there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with, this was a bit of a muddle. They may not have quite managed to keep all the right bits and pieces together. But really, who was gonna know? Gradually, during the 19th century, the catacombs would be transformed into a proper mausoleum with all of the bones neatly stacked by type. How charming. You could view lovely neat stacks of craniums or femurs to your heart's content, but these days, there are the remains of more than six million Parisians. However, visits are prohibited, and a special police force actually enforces the laws of the catacombs. Number three. Sedlec Ossuary. This small chapel that's located in the Czech Republic looks like a regular old medieval Gothic church, but inside is a much different story. The Whoa. whole interior is decorated with the bones of more than 40,000 people. And if that were not creepy enough, they've really gone to town with the decorations here. Some ossuaries, or bone stores, were created when city cemeteries became too bone full stores. and they needed to find new ways to house the long dead bones of its inhabitants. In those instances, the bones were stacked, sometimes pretty creepily, it must be said, but really this is next level. I mean, I don't know about you, but I draw the line at making chandeliers out of people's grandmother. Ah, right, that's what I'm saying, like, how... This is respectful, right? Is th is this respect or is this disrespect? Is this respectfully done or is it disrespectfully done? I'm confused here. I'm confused. Like, I get you running out of space. You got to figure things out. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I don't know. This is, it's, but yeah, intriguing. I would definitely be a tourist wanting to go there. I ain't gonna lie to you just to see this up close and personal and be like, whoa, this actually does exist. Believe it or not. Number two, the Great Pyramid of Giza. The largest of all the ancient pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Giza was the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu. Khufu ruled over Egypt during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom. His pyramid, where he intended to be entombed, was built over the course of 27 years in the early 26th century BC, which makes it the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It had once stood at 481 feet tall. This meant that the Great Pyramid was also the tallest man-made structure on Earth for over 3,800 years. It was originally encased in white limestone, and over time, it was removed, thus making the pyramid shorter than it used to be. It now stands at about 454 feet high. This massive structure was built from about 2.3 million large blocks of stone, these weighing approximately 6 million tons in total. The stone used was mostly quarried from the local area of the Giza Plateau, though there were also some blocks that were transported along the Nile all the way from the Aswan. Inside of the Great Pyramid, there are three chambers, those that are known about anyway. There's the Queen's Chamber, 
the king's chamber, and another one that was cut into the bedrock where the pyramid was then built. Although there have been many, many theories about the structure of the pyramid and the reasons behind its design, nobody can say for absolute certainty what it was all for and why it was created like this. Grave robbers were a real issue during this time, and it seems that the problem may have well influenced the design and structure within the pyramid. But beyond all of that, the religion and beliefs about the afterlife, along with all the other practices of the people, informed at least some of the design. But despite the increased use of modern technology like scanners and robots and such, much of the Great Pyramid still remains quite the mystery. Number 1. Tomb of China's First Emperor the site of the tomb of the first Chinese emperor is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is so vast and complex that despite being discovered in the mid-1970s, the tomb itself still remains unexcavated. This is the location of the Terracotta Warriors. I mean, as it should. You, you see, you come across something like this, you stumble upon this, make this discovery, you leave it be, bro. Respectfully leave this be. This is so much history and I, I still don't think we figured out all the way out what this truly what's happening here i know we have the theories but who knows Let, leave it be and they've done their job of guarding their emperor even now by keeping the archaeologists busy while the tomb continues to remain undisturbed thousands of warriors and horses depicted in terracotta stand guard over the ancient tomb they were all sporting full armor and stand in a particularly menacing battle formation facing the east, as this would have been the direction that the emperor's enemies would have come from. Incredibly, each of the sculptures is an individual, and they have different facial features, hairstyles, and their ranks are made evident by their headgear. Each statue stands around six feet tall, weighing anywhere up to 600 pounds, but the reason that archaeologists believe that these terracotta warriors were buried in the tomb is the ancient Chinese tradition of the afterlife. 3,000 years ago, the people of ancient China believed that when they they would exist in the afterlife. So the wealthy, along with the nobility of China, wanted to take with them the things that they would need in the next world. This included their servants. Yes, there was actually a tradition of burying the still living servants of royalty with them when they... Horrifying! I don't know if I heard that right. Did y'all hear that right? I'm trying to get my ear a little bit closer. Did he just say the still living servants still living like you're going whether you want to or not wow and kind of impractical so when the emperor i imagine it was likely to be really inconvenient if all of the best soldiers also had to go with him so the solution appears to have been to replace the living breathing bodies with pottery depictions well that's all from today I know we complain about different things that happen in these days and times, but could you imagine living back then and you're a servant and you're the person you're serving goes and now you're there telling you, okay, he's gone. You got to go with him. They might not even say that to you. You come into this probably knowing that's the case. Wow. Wow, as a ser servant, bro, I would be trying to make sure he is the healthiest. Nothing ever happens to him. He's well protected. I'd be guarding him with my life because my life depends on it. Yeah, that's, I ain't never heard nothing like that before, man. The servant goes a lot. Wow. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of the 20 strangest tombs in the world. It's your boy, L, man. Stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.